how are you guys doing tonight? <laughs> Woo! Woo! A little bit better. Did you guys hear that last Wednesday was Talk Like a Pirate Day? Did everybody hear that? I always wondered how you say, God, my head hurts in Somali. I, I just got back from vacation recently, went down to New Orleans. I love New Orleans. I love any town where a nickel's worth of beads will get you closer to second base than dinner and a movie will around here. Woo! <laughs> but I made a mistake. I went to New Orleans with my wife and my mother. Never do that. We're walking down Bourbon Street. My mother's showing off her boobs for beads by lifting up her skirt. <laughs> I tell you what, it was hot as hell down there. It reminded me of my vacation earlier this year. My wife and I got to take a cruise, went to Jamaica. Beautiful island, Jamaica. But the only problem I had with Jamaica was everybody there tried to sell me weed. And I want to know what is it looking at me that makes them think I would be out of weed. I don't know about you guys, but I can plan ahead. Well, I have to say, I don't smoke weed anymore, <laughs> officer. Uh, I, just, I don't see the need. I already have a body by munchies. Woo! I was never a puff, puff, pass kind of guy. I was more of a puff, puff. Where are those damn cheese puffs? <laughs> uh, and I know that's stereotypical to talk about Jamaicans selling weed, but I believe in stereotypes. I think stereotypes exist for a reason, and every time I say that, somebody walks up to me and goes, I know so-and-so who doesn't fit that stereotype. Of course you do. If you didn't, it wouldn't be called a stereotype, it would be called a fact. I'm sure somewhere there's an Asian woman who can drive and did not graduate the top of her class. I'm sure somewhere there's a black man who can swim and understands hockey. I'm sure somewhere there's a Mexican who lives by himself and never carpools. Woo! I'm sure somewhere there's a Canadian who's rude and a Frenchman who's not. I'm sure somewhere in Arkansas there's somebody with a full set of teeth who doesn't think the tornado sounded like a goddamn train. Woo! And I'm sure somewhere there's a priest who prefers altar girls. Oh! Uh, Billy blew my cover. I am actually an attorney. A, I'm, a, I'm a criminal defense attorney. And, and I know I don't look like an attorney, but I come by that naturally. I came from a very screwed up household. My mother was college educated, had a master's degree. My father was an absolute redneck. So we were the only trailer in the trailer park with a lending library. Woo! We learned how to pair our wine with our ramen noodles. Little tip. Boone's Farm goes with everything. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And, you know, there's a saying in the law that you never ask a question that you don't already know the answer to. You just never do that. But I've got questions that I don't know the answer to, like, why does Lane Bryant sell skinny jeans? <laughs> or is it considered a compliment if your dog calls you a son of a bitch? Or is it technically inaccurate to call your father a motherfucker? Oh. Or last, how was there ever a TV show called BJ and the Bear that was not gay porn? Woo! Yeah. It's a miracle. You know, I, I am an attorney. Uh, I died in the wool. I'm, I'm an attorney, but I'm also a died in the wool tattooed Harley Davidson rider. Love my motorcycle. But I've got a buddy of mine, he is tattooed from head to toe, and every tattoo has a meaning. And I always wonder, you know, what his tattoos mean. But he's got this little butterfly right there on his hand. So I asked him one day, I said, okay, what the hell? You've got dragons and swords and skulls, but you've got a butterfly right there. What the hell does that mean? He goes, oh, <laughs> that's a tramp stamp. <laughs> How many Okies do we have here? Woo! Okay, I was not born here, but I've lived here long enough I can say this. This is a weird-ass state. It is the only state I know where you cannot buy wine in the grocery store, but you can buy meth at any high school. 
<laughs> oh, I'm not going to say Oklahoma has a meth problem, but we've got so many people cooking meth that we are the only state with meth chefs. Now there's a show you'd like to see on the Food Network. Today on Meth Chef, we have guest chef Bubba from Wagner. Okay, y'all, what you do is you take this big old bag of Sudafed, and I always use Sudafed, never that generic wall you fed shit. You grind it up. I like to use the coffee grinder. Doesn't do shit for the meth, but it does wonders for the coffee. Uh, <laughs> have a little splash of Drano, shake it up, next thing you know, bam, you've got meth. Actually, if you get to bam, you probably shook it a little too long. Oh. And I'm convinced that that whole shaking bake method of making meth was not intentional. Somebody just walked up to a meth head, put all the ingredients together, and said, here, hold this still. <laughs> have been a great audience. I'm going to end with this. If I could get serious with you for just a moment, I'd like to talk about internet porn. It's a scary thing when you have kids, and I have kids. But they've come out with this thing called Net Nanny that will scan the website to tell you if it's safe. The one thing it confuses with stand-up comedy, or with porn, is stand-up comedy. I guess fake laughter and fake orgasm sound a lot alike. It's been great fucking with you guys. I'm CR Parsons. You guys have a good night. Woo! <laughs>